beloved god bless you god bless you god bless you and welcome 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 to our cyber bible study which we do every wednesday night at 7 p.m i am pastor reginald thomas and i thank you so much for joining us and being with us tonight i pray that your day and your week thus far has been enlightening and edifying and tonight we're going to continue learning the word of god this is our cyber series where we believe that we are supposed to use the word of God, not just learn and, and learn and memorize Bible verses, but 
we want to also commit those verses to our actions and our lives. Our Bible study goal is, as always, living a life pleasing unto God, walking in righteousness, and becoming a better Christian by following God's word. The reason why we study, why do we study? Well, the Bible tells us that what Soever things were written aforetime, they were written for our learning that we through, hallelujah, patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. That comes from Romans 15 and 4. The Bible also tells us uh, at uh, 1 Peter 3 and 15, it says, but sanctify or separate the Lord God in your hearts. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you to reason for the hope that is in you with meekness, hallelujah, and with fear. So welcome, 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 everybody. Let's see who we have on with us tonight so far. I see Sister Polly is with us. God bless you, mom in love. Sister Evan, Sister Rab, Sister Hattie, Auntie Hattie, uh, Sister Duana. Uh, Sister Martha Jackson, Sister Francis, Pastor Simmons is watching, uh, Sister Debbie Henderson, Dr. Stevenson is watching, Brother Barry Jordan is also with us, uh, Deacon Barry Jordan, bless his heart, and let me see here, I see Sister Winnie and Sister Virginia Martin, bless both of them, they're with us as well, so God bless all of you, we're going to have a good time tonight, got an interesting topic uh, pray that it'll be beneficial for everyone. We want to make sure, though, before we continue, Sister Wright, God bless you. I see you with us. Uh, we're going to make sure that uh, you all don't get lax and, and don't get comfortable. We want to make sure that you stay safe, you stay inside and be prepared. Make, make sure you wear your masks. Uh, keep your distance and wash your hands. It's not over yet. I believe it is close, but it's not over yet. Amen, somebody. I want to again keep us informed. Uh, we have a grief relief program where we do sessions uh, where we allow folks to express themselves and express their grief. Uh, if you are interested, we were doing that on Friday nights, but for convenience and for more people to be uh, with us, uh, we're going to change to Tuesday night. Next Tuesday at 7 o'clock will be our next grief relief. That will be our third session. And um, we're looking forward to seeing you there. Uh, Evangelist Garvin, God bless you. I see she's come and join us as well. Uh, we want to make sure that we have as we that we impact as many people as possible. So we're going to um, we're going to. Stop meeting on Friday nights and we're going to do our Zoom on Tuesday night. We'll give you more information for that. It'll be on Facebook Live. Uh, it'll be on our Facebook page. And at the end of this lesson, we'll give you the contact information so that if you so choose that you can join us. Amen. So let's continue on to our interactive quiz. This is something we do every week to get our brain cells moving and Get everything working, amen, so that we are able to, to receive the word of God. Uh, and so we want to make sure that we got our brains warmed up. And we do that by giving you a little Bible trivia. A little Bible trivia tonight, all right, as always. So we always want you to finish a Bible, a Bible scripture to start off with. So uh, finish this Bible verse. The Lord is in his holy temple. Is the next part of that verse A, let all the earth keep silence before him? Is it B, let all the earth be glad about it? Or is it C, let us praise him and rejoice? Finish this Bible verse, beloved. Uh, let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the earth be glad about it or let us praise him and rejoice. The Lord is in his holy temple. So I see uh, Pastor Simmons, Evangelist Garvin, and Dr. Stevenson have all said A, as well as Sister Martha Jackson says A, Sister Deb Henderson says A, and the answer is A, that all the earth keep silent before him. Amen. 
All right, question number two. I see Sister Mary Williams is with us. Sister uh, Vicki Houston Lewis is with us as well. Uh, who is, who is the weeping prophet? The weeping prophet, is it A, Isaiah? Is it B, Ezekiel? Or is it C, Jeremiah? Pastor Simmons has a fast finger tonight. He says it's Pastor C. Brother Matthew is with us tonight, man. God bless you, Brother Matthew. Glad to see you, man. I hope you're doing well. Uh, Doc Stevenson says C. Uh, Sister Evan says C. Uh, Sister Martha Jackson says C. And the answer is C. Jeremiah is the weeping prophet. Amen. Jeremiah is the weeping prophet. All right, let's go to our true or false questions. True or false, Jesus said, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Jesus said, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Is that true or false, beloved? Is that true or false? Let's see, we have Pastor Simmons says true. Yes, uh, Jeremiah was the weeping prophet. Amen. Jeremiah was the weeping prophet. Uh, and the answer, uh, I see I'm getting mostly true. And the answer is, yes, it is true. Jesus did say, destroy this temple. And in three days, I will bring it up. He was talking about him, his body being his temple as our bodies are our temples. All right. True or false? Question number two. The tabernacle was portable and it moved with the people. And it could never be left behind. The tabernacle was portable. It moved with the people and could never be left behind. Is that true or false? The tabernacle was portable. Sister Chandler says false. Pastor Simmons says true. Sister Winnie Thompson says true. Uh, Sister Evans, true, true. Sister Francis, true. Sister Martha Jackson, Doc Stevenson, true. It is true. The tabernacle was portable. It was made to be taken down and restructured as the children of Israel moved uh, throughout the wilderness. So, yes, the tabernacle was portable. Uh, so, let's see. Uh, the next question is kind of related. I don't want to tell you more information until after you answer this question. True or false? True or false? The tabernacle and the temple are the same thing. True or false? The tabernacle and the temple are the same thing. Is that a true question? Is that a true statement or is that false? Let's see who's got the fastest fingers tonight. Pastor Simmons says that is false. Sister Evans says that is false. So does Sister Winnie, Dr. Stevenson. Uh, Sister Martha Jackson, uh, Sister Monroe, Sister Mary Williams, and that is absolutely false. The tabernacle was a portable tent, but the temple was an actual brick and mortar structure uh, that was permanent. Amen. Amen. All right. Here's uh, our uh, last multiple choice question. The word tabernacle means A, dwelling place, B, holy space, C, sacred tent, or D, all of the above. Let me read that question again so there's no misunderstanding. The word tabernacle means a dwelling place, B, a holy space, C, a sacred tent, or D, all of the above. And everybody is saying D, all of the above, all of the above. Well, I guess I kind of tricked y'all a little bit on this one. The definition of the word tabernacle is dwelling place. However, with our Bible application of what the tabernacle was, it was all of those things. It was a dwelling place. It was the dwelling place for the Holy Spirit. It was also holy space that contained on the inside of it a space that was 
exclusive for the priest and then the holy of holies which was exclusive to only the high priest greg whittle god bless you man thank you for joining us brother whittle and uh and then of course it was a tent tabernacle literally does mean tent so it was a sacred tent that would that moved with the children of israel all right, so you guys are doing great as always. You're always on point. I love it. I've got probably the most intelligent group of scholars, biblical scholars who tune in and uh, watch this Bible study. I'm very proud of you all. Sister Marilyn Wise has joined us. God bless you. God bless you. Our bonus questions, and I love this. I love this section. I don't know if y'all like it. Let me know if y'all if y'all want me to get rid of this part. Uh, we can do that. But I love it because it tell, tells me how much you know about the Old Testament versus the New Testament. The Old Testament versus the New Testament. All right. So our first question. And this, this simply, all you have to answer is OT or NT, uh, New Testament. You got an educated and, and informed group led by a learned teacher. Bless, bless your heart. Pastor Simmons, amen. Uh, we, we uh, you know, iron sharpens iron. So we... Thank God for, for your thought on as far as that goes. All right, now, Old Testament or New Testament. I'm going to give you a Bible, uh, something that happened in the Bible. You're going to tell me, um, or it could be a person, uh, and you're going to tell me, is this, did this happen in the Old Testament or the New Testament? All right, here we go. A talking donkey. A talking donkey. There is a talking donkey in the Bible. Is it in the Old Testament or the New Testament? A talking donkey. Sister Francis was the first to answer. And she said Old Testament. Pastor Simmons says Old Testament. Sister Mary Williams, Old Testament. Doc Stevenson says Old Testament. Sister Chandler, Old Testament. Sister Martha Jackson, Old Testament. And you all are right. It is the Old Testament. The talking don donkey was speaking to Balaam uh, in the Old Testament in the book of Numbers. The book of Numbers. All right. Question number two. A man is cursed with leprosy for lying. A man is cursed with leprosy for lying. Is that in the Old Testament or the New Testament? Let's see. Let's see. Uh, First Lady... Tamala is watching. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, and Pastor Simmons says New Testament. A man is cursed with leprosy for lying. Lying. Sister Chandler says Old Testament. Sister Vicki Houston Lewis says Old Testament. Uh, all right. Let's see. We got a couple of split voice. We got Doc Stevenson says New Testament. Sister Wise and Sister Wright. Sister Jackson says New Testament. New Testament. Well, hmm. Uh, Sister Francis says, oh, and Sister Evans says, oh, well, it is the Old Testament. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you remember the prophet Elisha, his servant, lied when, when Naaman came to be cured by Elisha. And, um, and Elisha cured his leprosy and, and, uh, and did not accept any payment for it. When Naaman left. Gehazi, who was uh, Elijah's servant, went after him and uh, received payment from, received goods and I think it was uh, clothing and, and jewelry and whatnot. And, uh, and when he came back, the, the spirit had spoke to Elijah and he already knew what he had done and he lied and said that he didn't. And uh, he was then cursed with leprosy. So... Yes, it is the Old Testament. It is the Old Testament. Next question, Onesimus. Who remembers Onesimus? Is that Old Testament? Is the story of Onesimus, is that in the Old Testament or the New Testament? Let's see. I got a little deep on you with that last question. This one maybe is a little challenging as well. But this is why, this is why we do this, to, to, get, you, to get you all, uh, you know, thinking about uh, the word and and getting your getting your mind sharp. Pastor Simmons says New Testament. Our brother Greg Whittle says New Testament. Uh, I'm 
I'm, uh, let me see if I, anybody else is going to answer. I think that that name is not that familiar to a lot of a lot of saints. Well, Vantas Garvin says New Testament. Amen. And it is the New Testament. It's in the book of Philemon. Uh, Onesimus was the, the slave that Paul sent back uh, to, to Philemon. Um, the name sound new. Amen. Yeah, you know, that that's a great point, Sister Winnie. Um, some of these names you can tell uh, because the Greek names generally, a, a lot of them end in, in, in A-S or O-S or, or U-S. Uh, so this Onesimus is, uh, is the slave that Paul sent back to, uh, to Philemon. Amen. All right. So that's New Testament. The New Test, I'm sorry, the temple is cleansed. The temple is cleansed. Did that happen in the Old or New Testament? The temple is cleansed. The temple is cleansed. Let's see who uh, who is the fastest fingers for this question. Vanessa Garvin says the New Testament. Sister Chandler, the New Testament. KK, that's my junior high school uh, uh, junior high school alumni is Broadway Junior High and New Testament New Testament we got a lot of New Testaments and yes the temple was cleansed by Jesus himself the New Testament in the New Testament uh, it, it occurred actually twice in the New Testament so you all got that right New Testament back on track hey so uh, this scripture is this from the Old or the New Testament. The Bible says, Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Is that Old Testament scripture or new? Old Testament or new? Sister Dewana Chandler says, Oh, Brother Greg Whittle says new. Uh, Sister... Um, Carol Monroe, I don't know what that means. New Testament, Evangelist Garvin, Old Testament, Sister Rab, New Testament, Dr. Stevenson, New Testament, Sister Martha Jackson, Sister Winnie says New Testament, and it is from the New Testament. The Bible says, Galatians 6 and 9, it says, uh, God is not mocked. Uh, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man sows, that shall he also reap all right all right so we've done our bible trivia amen amen and amen uh, uh we now we come to our uh, just our fun trivia uh and uh we're at the section do you know do you know do you know do you know hey sister sharon Paris. god bless you she's with us now she missed she missed our uh our trivia but then we're gonna have some fun Let's see what you know. I want to before before we go further. Did y'all enjoy the the music last last week? Because we were thinking about doing that again, but we don't want to wear it out. So maybe we'll do that once a month with the music. Give you some challenging music. But all right, here we are. Do you know? Do you know? Let me know in the comments if uh, if you like the music and you think we should make that um, maybe at once a month or every other week. <laughs> Sister Chandler said yes, yes. Okay, we're getting a lot of yeses. All right, play, praise God. We enjoyed that. I enjoy, I really enjoyed it. And y'all y'all know that music. I tell you, y'all really, really know it. All right, so we're going to do that. We're going to do that. Amen. We're going to do that. We're going to continue to do The music was great. Praise God. All right, so we got some... This, this week, our Do You Know is Cartoons. If you were if you were like me on Saturday morning, it was it was cartoons, Soul Train, karate movies, then you went out to play. That's what it was. So I want to see who knows the cartoons like I do. Who's this guy? Who's this guy? Let's see who's the fastest fan. I know everybody's gonna know. Oh, okay. Uh Sister Sharon says, sorry she missed the uh she missed it. She's traveling on the road with her husband. God bless you. Well we we um we want to say, hey, Mr. Parrish. Mr. Parrish, God bless you. Chiller. <laughs> Assistant Marilyn Wise said, UD. 
That is, that's right, sister. Sister Francis said, "Underdog." That's right. That's my. That was my man, Underdog. When Sweet Polly is in trouble, I am not slow. It's hip, 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 and away I go. Yeah, I, I love the Underdog. All right, so everybody got Underdog. Who's this guy? Who's this guy? Let's see. Everybody knew who Underdog was. Sebby Vans is garbage. She's too young. She don't know about Underdog. No need. There's no need to fear. That's right. Underdog is here. That's right. And, and uh, Pastor Simmons got Mr. Magoo. That's right. That's Mr. Magoo. <laughs> Mr. Magoo. Bless your heart. Hey, Sister Bass. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Yes, that is Mr. Magoo. That was my man, too. He would drive everywhere. Couldn't see a lick. Hey, man. We love my Mr. Magoo. And this was my favorite uh, one of my favorite uh, paid for a hamburger on Friday. That was not Mr. Magoo. That was uh, that was what's his name? Wimpy, Wimpy from Popeyes, the hot hamburger guy. So who's this guy? Everybody knows this. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's Yogi the Bear. Yogi the Bear. That's right. Past Simmons and Sister Sharon, Sister Winnie, the Yogi the Bear. All right, we got another one. Uh, this is a good one. Who knows? Who knows who this? These two are. Everybody probably knows one, but do you remember who the little guy, what was his name? Somebody, Mr. Mary Ruth says, Scoop Doo. That ain't Scooby Doo. <laughs> no, that Yogi Best. No, Yogi Bear, Yogi Bear. That's right, Sister Rocky. That's uh, that's right. It was Rocky and Bullwinkle. Bullwinkle and the Flying Squirrel. That's right, Rocky and the Flying Squirrel. So it's Bullwinkle and Rocky. Yes, Bullwinkle and Rocky. And and the guy that the villain in this, uh, what was his name? But he looked just like Rudy Giuliani. I can't remember. Oh, was that the underdog villain that looked like Giuliani? Maybe it was. But yeah, that's Rocky and Bullwinkle. All right. Three more to go. Who's this guy? And I, I can't remember the, the girl's name, but... <laughs> But uh, I remember him, Von Sinister. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Who? So who's this guy with the blonde hair, the blonde haired Mount Mounty? Let's see, Sister Margot Barnes, Pastor Margot Barnes. God bless you. Thank you for coming along and joining us tonight. Praise God. Penelope Pitstop. All right, somebody knew what they talk. Sweet Polly Purebred. That was Underdog's girl. That was Underdog's girl, but nobody got, that's, yeah, nobody doesn't know who this guy is. If I say his first name, y'all, everybody will know. You see, did anybody get it yet? Uh, well, since nobody got it so far, that is Dudley Do-Right. Dudley Do-Right. Dudley Do-Right. Yeah, that's Dudley Do-Right. So, um, yeah, he was uh, the Mountie, the Mountie, the, the Canadian Mountie, I think he was. All right. Let's see. We got two to go. Two to go. I got one on. I got one nobody got. All right. Praise God. Praise God. So, easy. Who are these guys? Who are these guys? That's right. Pastor Simmons said Fat Albert. Fat Albert, yes it is. Sister Chandler, Fat Albert. <laughs> Sister Marilyn Wise. Yeah, that's Fat Albert. And who the, what's the rest of the guy's name though? Y'all don't can't forget everybody else. Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids. Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids. Yeah. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> Gonna have a good time. Hey, hey, hey. We're having fun tonight. All right. And the last one, the last cartoon. Everybody knows this. Everybody knows this. Uh, what a This was one of the uh, greatest uh, cartoons ever. Uh, let's see. The Jackson 5. That is correct. The Jackson 5. And they, they, their cartoon was great. The music was awesome. Yes, yes, yes. Fat Albert and the gang, that's right. The Jackson Five, amen. 
All right, so that is our do you know, do you know, do you know section. And now let's look into our fun facts. Our fun facts for tonight's lesson. Those of you who already know, um, we're going to talk about uh, the uh, church etiquette and protocol. A new question. Recite the good times theme song. <laughs> Last line. Just looking out of the window, watching the asphalt grow. Uh, making a way when you can't. Temporary layoffs, easy credit ripoffs. Uh, I don't know what the last line is. Hanging in the chow line. Good times. Ain't we lucky we got them? Good times. Uh, I think I got it. See, I, I don't mind being. I don't mind being on the recipient end of some of these trivia questions. Amen. But our fun facts tonight are centered on on um on the temple and the reverence of it. All right. So here's uh, what, what the temple, there were uh, 12 tribes uh, of Israel and they were designated. They had, they each had a portion of the temple that they were responsible for guarding. It, it's amazing that the, that the, uh, the uh, tribes were split up. They all there were three tribes that had the responsible for the north, three in the east, three in the south, three in the west. So the the way that it was set up by uh, by God through Moses uh, made sure that 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 the temple was protected on all sides. So the east side was Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun. The south side was Reuben, Simeon, and Gad. The west side was Ephraim, Manasseh, and Benjamin, and the north side was Dan, Asher, and Naphtali. So the, the, the temple was always protected on all sides. Now the Levites, were they were responsible to be camped around the tabernacle, and they stood between the tabernacle and the Israelites. So again, there is a buffer from, from the people and from the priests and the tabernacle. We'll talk about that a little bit later in a little more detail. Now, the most holy part of the tabernacle was exclusive. Only the high priest could go in, and he could only go in once a year. And that was on the Day of Atonement to give uh, sacrifices for the people. Amen. So that is our uh, fun facts for today. Um, and tonight, we're going to talk about church etiquette and proper worship protocol church etiquette and proper worship protocol um you know we've gotten away from that in the church we don't necessarily teach it anymore what we it seems like the church has gotten to the point where we're more concerned about who shouts and who runs up and down the church and who uh, donates the most money rather than who shows the most reverence and I want I think it's important that we do give it a uh, give the information so that people know and are taught the correct manner that we are to worship and the correct etiquette that we are to and way that we are to carry ourselves in the sanctuary. Uh, so let's go to our opening statement. The Bible teaches us reverence in many ways. And as believers, we are to honor our place of worship, honor our leaders and our fellow worshipers as the scripture instructs us to. Uh, discipline and obedience are foundational building blocks for a peaceful sanctuary. And that peaceful sanctuary, if we create that space, will be a welcome space for the inhabitation of the Holy Spirit. And so it should be our goal as earthly keepers of the holy space that God has anointed and appointed for us, whether it be brick or mortar or cyberspace, to maintain that structure in a manner pleasing to God and pristine in and out. And if it is a cyber structure or cyber uh, church family, then we need to make sure that we are honoring each other in the way that we should. So let's continue. Uh, Etiquette is defined as the customary rules for conduct or behavior in polite society. That's what etiquette is. Um, and it is not different 
uh, in polite society than it is in our churches today. We should have church etiquette. Protocol. Protocol is a code that prescribes strict adherence to correct etiquette and precedent as in diplomatic exchange and in military services. So uh, the, the etiquette comes first and then the protocol is the, the adherence to the etiquette. Amen. All right. So let's break it down piece by piece, shall we? Let's go into our our understanding and our scripture and our uh, our points that we're going to make tonight. So what we want to do is number one, we want to honor the sanctuary. Honor the sanctuary. How do we do that, Pastor? How do we honor our sanctuary? The best way that we can do that is to be prepared for worship. So when we come into our sanctuary, sanctuary uh, is a the word sanctify means to separate. So the sanctuary is a separate place where our behavior should change. Uh, we should still be Christian no matter if we're in or out of the building, but we should have a certain reverence when we enter into the building because it is sanctified and it is blessed and anointed. So we need to prepare ourselves before we get into the sanctuary. What does that mean? That means that if you got a problem and somebody cut you off or somebody took your favorite parking spot in a parking lot or whatever, get rid of all of that before you get to the building. Purge yourself of all of that uh, anger, all of that angst, whatever is in your heart and mind. Don't bring it into the sanctuary. Leave it out there and hopefully you'll feel so much better when you leave the sanctuary that wherever you leave it at it'll stay there and it won't continue and it won't follow you so we need to be prepared for worship how do we do that how does the bible tells us tells us to do that well psalms 122 and 1 says i was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the lord we should come into the house of prayer with with thanksgiving with praise we should be happy to be in the service there's a song that goes glad to be in the service and it's very very true because that is the proper etiquette and protocol for being in worship you don't come into worship with a negative attitude you come because there is something there for you there is something that's going to lift you something that's going to edify you something that is going to give you instruction something that's going to build you up something that's going to give you information that's going to help you deal with whatever it is that's that's uh bothering you or plaguing you outside of church outside of the building and in your life amen so we need to be glad when they said uh when when we get the opportunity to come to the house of prayer it shouldn't be oh uh, well it's sunday i guess i better get up and go to church no it should be hallelujah it's sunday i'm so glad to be in the service i'm so glad that i get another opportunity to praise god and give him thanks for what he has done in my life. That's why I love Psalm 104. It says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Come into the house with a praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. So we ought to, that, that is how we honor the sanctuary, by coming into the building with an atmosphere and a, with, with an attitude of gratitude and of praise where we know that what we need is inside the building. Now, I'll give you an example. None of you, when you got a pocket full of money, go into Macy's or Nordstrom's or wherever you shop, Walmart, wherever it may be, and be mad about it. You come in there because they have what you need inside or they have what you want inside. And that is how we should treat our sanctuary the same way. We should be glad to be entering in. But now while we are glad, to enter into that space and into that building, we have to understand that there are parts of that building that are sacred, that should be treated with reverence, and that we should respect at all times. Let's talk about the spaces in the sanctuary. The pulpit 
is sacred space. Uh, Pastor Simmons is 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 on with us, and and I know he's he's cyber now. But if he ever gets a building, one of the things that that as preachers we are learned and we're we're taught, and and I'm I'm I guess I'm speaking for myself. I can't speak for everyone, but when you are responsible for a pulpit, you do not let anybody get in that pulpit. If I let you preach at my church, I have respect for you. Or someone has uh, spoken to me that I respect that has given me their word that you are worthy of that space. It is not given indiscriminately. And just, just speaking plain English, if I got a problem with you, you will not be in my pulpit. And that is one thing that that uh, that is is that is the one thing in my control at Great Harvest or wherever wherever any pastor is that that we will never relinquish because all it takes is one um, jack leg a bootleg preacher to get up there and he could erase uh, <laughs> he could erase seven years of your preaching. In, in 15 or 20 minutes of, of his nonsense. So you have to be careful who you allow in your pulpit. Pulpit is sacred space. Not only is it sacred space as far as speaking from it. Let's go to the next slide. Speaking from the pulpit, only the minister or invited speakers are allowed to speak from the center pulpit. You, you're not supposed to just come up there if you're a lay person. You're not, you don't come and speak. Uh, that's why whenever there, if you go to churches um, that have uh, funerals, there's always a lectern or, or a uh, podium where people can speak without coming into the pulpit. And I was at, I, I did a funeral a, a few months ago, a couple of months ago, where their, uh, <laughs> their pastor wasn't there. I was preaching the eulogy. And so the funeral director was was kind of in control of of who and he was letting people and 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 I and I and I said, uh, you know, I know I'm not pastor here, but you're not supposed to let everybody just come up in, in the pulpit and and do remarks. And he said, well, that's the only mic they have. I said, well, pass it to him on the floor then. But but it wasn't mine to defend. But that'll never happen at Great Harvest. Because the pulpit is sacred space. So other persons are asked to use side lecterns if they're participating in the worship service. When the pastor or minister is speaking from the pulpit, there should be no walking or talking during this time. There should be respect for what is being taught, what is being um, brought to light from, from the pulpit. The pulpit is the, the center of the worship. Um, and I could go really, really deep, but I, there's so much information I, I, I'd rather um, pass. You know, I, I don't want to get too deep, but here's what I want. Here's what I want to um, express to you. Pulpits are were um, actually uh, only you only hear about a pulpit one time in the Bible. Let's look at what the Bible says. Right. So there's only one mention of, of a pulpit in the Bible, and it comes in the book of Nehemiah in the eighth chapter. And so here's what happened. And, and watch this, because this is important to understand why there's a pulpit now and what happens behind the pulpit. So here's the here's the scripture. I'll read it to you. At number, verse four is uh, Nehemiah chapter eight, verse four. And Ezra the scribe stood upon a pulpit of wood, which they had made for the purpose and beside him stood Mattahiah and Shema and Ananiah and Urijah and Hilkiah and Manasseh and on his right hand and on his left hand Pediah and Michelle and Malkujan and Hashem and Habashdana and Zechariah and Meshulam. So so he's in this pulpit now now it's important to understand that the inference is made that it is elevated and now and, and he's in the you know, behind the pulpit and on, and standing on it, and he has uh, men that are standing behind him. 
Now, here's the next thing. Verse 5 says, And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people. That's what I mean. It was it was implied that he was, that the pulpit um, lifted him up higher. That's why in, in churches, the pulpit is always elevated. Um, and, and now there's some churches that don't follow that rule. Some some churches um, have don't have actual elevated pulpits. It's just a flat surface. That's up to them, but that's not biblical. Uh, so it says Ezra opened the book in sight of all the people and when he opened it up all the people stood up So what does that mean? Ezra is about to read scripture. So why when we're in our Service and we ask you to stand in reverence to the reading of the word That's where it came from. It's biblical. That's why we say stand in, in reverence to the reading of God's word Because that's how it was done. But watch this 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 part. We don't really um, we don't really follow from the Bible, but it says, and Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. That means he prayed and all the people answered, amen, amen, with lifting up their hands and they bowed their heads and they worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So this is, if you want to read the, the rest of this for yourself, um, this is in the, again, I'll tell you, it's in the book of Nehemiah chapter eight, uh, Nehemiah is, uh, I'm sorry, Ezra is reading this. these were the lost scriptures. They found them. Ezra is reading these to the people and they are getting the understanding and they are worshiping just from hearing the word of God. Amen. All right. I'm sorry. I, I did not, um, I did not uh, let y'all um, read that along with me. I, I beg your pardon. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't, I didn't let the slides follow me as i was reading but but trust me i i read what it says so again all right so that's that's the pulpit now we we actually could go much deeper with that but let's keep on moving on it's already 747 let's keep on moving on uh there's other sacred spaces in the sanctuary and uh, those sacred spaces are the communion table and the baptismal pool they're sacred spaces as well uh, the communion table is used for one of two holy ordinances, ceremonies, or rites of the Baptist Church. Uh, the, everybody, I'm sure, knows what the... Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Sister Deb Henderson. I pray that you do trust me. I wouldn't, lead you, wouldn't mislead you. So, uh, the communion table is used. Um, ministers, watch this. Ministers and others who are in charge of the communion table, uh, communion service, are the only persons permitted to use it. Also, only baptized believers are, are allowed to partake in communion. The, the Bible even tells us, uh, let a man examine himself. So even if you are baptized, if you ain't living right, you're not supposed to, or at least you're supposed to pray and ask for forgiveness before you partake in communion. And we, we are to honor that communion table. Like you shouldn't put your personal item, you shouldn't put your Bible or nothing on there to rest it on there for any reason. So nothing should ever be on that communion table because it is holy and sacred. All right, let's continue. Let's continue. I pray this is helping somebody. I pray this is, uh, uh, you know, giving some, some good information. Uh, baptism is the other important ordinance, ordinance or ritual of the Baptist church. Uh, and in many churches, the baptismal pool is covered. That's what ours is in. In, a, in our fellowship hall and it's covered all the time and uh, no, nobody's allowed to go in there and play and uh, we don't we don't play that and we never even open it until we are baptizing someone until we are preparing to baptize them and then no one is allowed in it unless they're being baptized or assisting in the in the baptismal so uh you you have to keep that holy it is not a pool it is a holy and sanctified uh, space in God's house. Let's talk about entering and exiting the sanctuary. Pro proper protocol and etiquette when it comes to that. Uh, no one is to enter or leave the sanctuary during these three times. When praying, when there's praying, when the, the scripture is being read, or when the sermon is being preached. So, so, so the ushers are responsible for that. But no one is to enter during those times. And no one is supposed to leave during those times either. So 
Uh, you are to remain in church until the closing benediction. We're going to talk about the prayers and the benedictions and whatnot as well. That's the final prayer of the service. Ushers, they're considered the gatekeepers of the church. And they will remind you of those rules if you arrive late. Or if you if you have left and used the restroom or you have another reason to walk into or out of the sanctuary, um, they will uh, they will tell you when it's proper to come in. They'll tell you when it's proper to to uh, to stay out. But those three times prayers, the scripture, the sermon, uh, you are not supposed to be going in and out. It is a time of reverence. Amen. All right. So we, we want to give we want to give a shout out to the ushers. You know, because they're the doorkeepers, bless their hearts. And the Bible says, for a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. And I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Hallelujah, somebody. Now, here's something that's, 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 that's awesome, right? Uh, the Bible tells us we are to be silent during the service. We're to be silent during the service. And and I don't want you to take that literally because I don't want to come to church on Sunday and nobody saying amen. That's not what it means. Amen. That is not what it means. But we are to have reverence for the uh, sacred parts of the service. So there is not to be a whole lot of, of, of uh, banter or back and forth unless it is praise. All right. Blessed is praise. Now watch this. Here's what the Bible says. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. That's Habakkuk uh, 2 and 20. So so there in, in the sanctuary during the service, there are times when we are to be silent. But there are also times we are we're to offer joyful praise. And we have to know when is when to do one and when to do the other so we have to if you are not uh, actively and effectively and fervently giving god praise then you need to be quiet then you don't need to be talking back and forth don't say uh don't you don't need to tell anybody um you, you know uh what happened on tv last night or you don't talk about whose dress looked like what or whether you don't need to talk about none of that if w w your speech what you're saying should be praise and here's uh what the scripture says uh we are to offer joyful praise amen and uh the the psalm 150 says praise ye the lord Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the lord so it's all right to talk in church if you're giving god praise it's all right to talk in church if pastor thomas asks you to help him preach now you there you can go overboard with that as well so your your praise and your feedback to the pastor shouldn't be so it draws attention on you it should be that it is encouraging and that it is praise because of what uh, the pastor or the preacher is the instruction that he's given or the information that he's given. And and there can be times when uh, some of the feedback is not necessarily praise, but it is out of bounds and out of order. So we have to be careful how we how we give feedback to the preacher and the teacher because sometimes it is almost disrespectful if you are uh, there there are times when 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 preachers get up and they preach about things where we're not supposed to be shouting and we supposed to be listening and taking that in and being fed and 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 being edified from it amen somebody so so listen when you when you tuned in tonight uh, i i don't know if you knew but we this you know this is uh this is the Keep It Real Baptist Amex over here. So we, we tell you the truth. And then we, we expect you to be, uh, you know, we expect you to be 
in, in a position to understand what we're saying is not meant for harm. It's meant for instruction. Amen. This one is obvious, but we, we're going to say it anyway. No food or drink in the sanctuary. Uh, the only exception to that is water. Uh, but, you know, we sometimes you can have children in there that need to be fed, or, you know, babies, infants or whatever. And if you must feed your children, do so before entering the sanctuary or take them outside. Uh, and, and, you know, don't bring your Gatorade in there, you know, but water again is OK. But you have to respect the house and respect the furniture in the house. Amen. All right. So we talked about etiquette. We talked about etiquette. I think we covered that in, in a good way. I want to talk about protocol. Let's go in our, into our deeper learning section. We explore the Bible in depth. Um, and I want to I want to break down the prayers because here's here's what it is. And I, I, I'll, I'll wait. Um, let me just break down the different prayers, because if you're called on to pray in a church service, there are certain prayers that are prayed at certain times in the service. Amen, somebody. Um, the first prayer that you will hear in a uh, church service is the invocation prayer. The invocation prayer. What is that? The invocation prayer is the prayer that invites the Holy Spirit into the worship service. And it also asks for help from the Holy Spirit. The, the, the Holy Spirit is is also our helper our comforter so when we pray this invocational prayer any service uh, every even church business meetings are supposed to have this invocational prayer where we invite the holy spirit uh into the meeting and and here's an example of uh of a invocational prayer exodus 33 and uh, 15 says then moses said to him if your presence does not go with us do not send us up from here and he's talking about don't send us into the promised land if you're not going with us. Amen. Uh, it's a prayer asking for the presence, the power of protection of the Holy Spirit. So that's what an invocational prayer is. Now, there's an altar prayer. We have an altar prayer every Sunday. An altar prayer can be an in, uh, intercessory prayer as well. That means that not only are you uh, praying for yourself or you're praying for healing you're praying for whatever it is for uh you're praying with sacrificial terms you when you have an altar prayer it is uh it, it the, the altar was used for sacrifice so when we go to the altar we go humbly and we go committing ourselves to sacrifice our lives to sacrifice the things that perhaps feed our flesh so that we can get the blessing that God or, or the healing that God has for us or, or, you know, whatever it may be that we stand in need of. So the altar prayer and it should it can be an intercessory prayer or it can be just a prayer where we ask for God's help and, and we pledge to God and ask for his forgiveness. And we pledge to God our obedience and sacrifice uh, for what it is that we're asking. Uh then there's the offering prayer. We we um we've kind of uh, since we've been back inside, we've uh, we've adjusted our service. So we do our offerings at the end. But there is supposed to be an offering prayer uh, where we pray over what folks give. Um, you know, and one of the things that we say is that uh, God loves a cheerful giver and he always makes provisions for him or her to have more. Uh, he bless you exceeding and abundantly. So the offering prayer is specifically to uh, to be uh, thankful uh, for what what uh, we are uh, giving to God and the blessings that He's given to us. There's the prayer of salvation. The prayer of salvation is when uh, you open up the doors of the church and someone actually joins, you're supposed to pray the prayer of salvation for them. You're supposed to pray over them because now that they have uh, joined the church, it is. Uh, likely that the enemy is going to attack them. Uh, so you pray the prayer of salvation for them. You pray the prayer of protection. All of that uh, comes together in that prayer. Again, we talked about this. It's an intercessory prayer. That's when you pray for uh, pray to God on behalf of others. Uh, that doesn't even have to be in church. Uh, you can pray for a, a, a wayward child or you know a wayward husband. Uh, uh, you know you, you can pray for 
you know, a sick family member. Uh, all of these things are, are, you know, intercessory prayers. And then there is the benediction. And I, we're going to go a little bit over time tonight. I don't have a lot more, but, but I pray that you will stick with us past the hour uh, so that we can finish up this lesson. But biblical benedictions, and, and this is what um, some um, Pastor Simmons will know this, but this is what some untrained preachers get wrong. Benediction is not just a prayer to close out a service. A benediction is a prayer of covering. And what is supposed to happen with a biblical benediction is a scripture is supposed to be included in a benediction prayer. If it does not have a scripture in it, it is not a benediction. You've been prayed over, but you have not received a benediction, which is an official Bible verse has to be included in that. So uh, just so you know, if you go to somebody's church, you'll never uh, you'll never hear that mistake made at Greater Harvest. But if you go to somebody's church and, and the benediction doesn't hear anything that you recognize as a Bible verse, um, you may not have actually heard a biblical benediction. All right, we're almost done. I want to I want to talk about service assignments. So when someone says to you, "Hey, can you get up and uh, can you do the announcements this week, or can you uh, uh, can you uh, you know um, read the scripture this week?" The, the, the key to that is do what you're asked to do and no more. If they ask you to read the scripture, don't get up there and sing a song first. If they ask you to um, do the announcements, don't, don't get up there and read the scripture first. So you are to do what you are asked to do and no more. You cannot take it upon yourself to do anything extra in, in the service that you are not assigned to do. That is out of the order. Bible says, 1 Corinthians 14 and 40, but all things should be done decently and in order. Next point, this is our, I think this is our last point, I believe it is. Uh, how do Christians treat others? How do Christians treat others? Well, I'm going. I'm going to the word. I ain't. Even, I'm not even going to give you my opinion on this. I'm going strictly with the word. Here's what the word of God says: Love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who persecute you. That's Matthew uh, six and forty-four. That's why it's so hard to be a Christian. Amen. Uh, Pastor Simmons says, stay in your lane. It's a full-time job. Amen. That's right. And you be thankful that you got a lane. Amen. And stay right in it. Amen. So how are we supposed to treat others? How are we supposed to um, to to walk? <laughs> Pastor, I mean, Reverend Jeff said, ouch. <laughs> but how are we supposed to walk? How are we supposed to live our lives? It comes from uh Psalms 1 and 1, it says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers. So all of these things that, that cause uh, turmoil and strife, we're supposed to avoid. We're not supposed to be involved in that. The Bible tells us that. Also, Hebrews 10, 24 and 25, watch this. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Not giving up meeting together. Bible, the, the King James Version says, Not forsaking the assembling of yourselves, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day of coming. So we're supposed to be fellowshipping together, encouraging each other with love and good deeds. And that means that you can't be as good a Christian from Bedside Baptist as you can at 541 15th Avenue. Amen. If you have a church home, you ought to be in it sometimes. All of the time, but at least sometimes. Amen, somebody. So, 
And here's what here's what what God what Christ said to his disciples. He says, so now I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. So that's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to love each other. That's how we're supposed to act. And and the best way um, to to uh, to do that is just treat folk like you would want to be treated. Amen. Amen. And the other thing, and one more thing to, uh, if we look at Isaiah 61 and 1, Isaiah says, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has appointed me, anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release darkness for the prisoners. In other words, we're not just supposed to be um, believers for ourselves. We're also supposed to be witnesses um, that that um, bring the good news to people who who need to hear it, who um, encourage those who are broken hearted and who, who give hope to those who feel like they're in bondage and that the that the the, uh, the bondage of, of sin and slavery, a slavery of sin has them uh, caught up and hindered. Finally, as faithful believers in Christ, our blessed Redeemer, we should have the heart and mind to live holy like Christ, loving one another, living humbly and striving to create disciples through our witnessing and our lifestyle. A lot of folks are just watching. They, they're going to they're going to learn more from you, from what you do than they will from what you say. Amen. Somebody to that. Amen and amen and amen once again. Believers know and understand that the power of the Holy Spirit comforts and comforts and guides them. The knowledge of the word instructs them and the spirit of the Lord lives in them and they behave as such. That's what it is. That's what church protocol, church etiquette is about. Living in the knowledge of the spirit of the Lord, knowing that he lives in you and behaving in that way. And then finally, the Bible tells us this. Jesus told us this in his uh, great commission. He said, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. That's why we're trying to create disciples so that the word can go forth, so that more can know about God, so that more can be saved from sin and pain and desolation and, dis and destruction and ending up in hellfire. That's our goal. Amen, somebody. Amen, amen. To God be the glory. That's our lesson for tonight. Uh, I'm so happy that most of you stayed um, and hung with us. Our conclusion is that uh, church tradition and etiquette is fundamental to our faith. And we want to make sure that we, um, we, we know these things, we understand them, and we abide by them. Amen. Amen and amen. Our moment of honor um, today is the uh, birthday of Keenan Ivory Wayans, the, the creator of In Living Color. We want to give him honor as he is a funny dude uh, and created a show that is uh, classic and timeless. So we thank God for him. Uh, coming up is uh, National Juneteenth uh, Freedom Day. It's coming up. Uh, in a couple of weeks we want to make sure that we celebrate that I pray that everyone went out and voted yesterday uh, My wife and I did Praise the Lord Amen, amen, amen Again we want to make sure that we study To show ourselves approved If you are so inclined And would like to sow a seed uh, Amen Into our uh, harvest and Great harvest uh, Our cash app handle is dollar sign harvest time 541 you can also give through paypal uh and uh praise god and uh sister mary says she did she voted bless her uh you can also give through paypal from our website amen and again as i said before we're changing our grief relief from uh, friday night friday night is a little tough for folk um, you know, Friday night at the beginning and plus at the end of the week, everybody's tired and fatigued. A lot of people don't want to sit in front of a computer at seven o'clock on a Friday night. So we're changing it to Tuesday night, Tuesday night, seven o'clock. And the same information, uh, if you can screenshot this, amen, good time. 
Thank you, Sister Henderson. Great teaching and understanding what was taught. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So uh, you see the meeting ID is 835-8215-1349. Password is closure. Uh, Dial-up access is 1929-205-6099. Participant ID, when, that, when they ask you for that, just hit the hashtag. And then put in the password. After that, it's 3388-426. That's for access to the Zoom. We do not do our grief relief live on Facebook. Uh, and we want to shout out uh, Real Talk Divas. Oh, she said maybe. Well, well, Sister Martha, please let us know because we'll make sure that you do get in. Um, if you've had trouble before getting in, we'll make sure that you get in next Tuesday. Uh, Real Talk Divas with um, uh, First Lady Tamala Simmons. Amen. Y'all need to hear her and check her out on uh, Monday nights at 8 p.m. Uh, First Lady is with her and Sister Mary and as well as another young lady. Um, they, they do powerful, powerful instruction and commentary so you need to check that out uh sister chat on saturday night god bless you if you're available for that at 7 p.m with Roz and shay i think you enjoy that really really funny they do they they go from soup to nuts so you and have a good time and enjoying that as well on sunday uh, we are having uh, youth day amen uh, our youth are going to going to uh, do some things in the service amen so look forward to that and as always we want to thank each and every one of you who tuned in tonight you've certainly been a blessing to me i pray that the lesson was a blessing to you and sir if you donated I want to thank you for that <laughs> God bless you.